what have you been cleared to do three on three? Uh, I would say like right before I left for school, I was starting to play a little bit more and get a little more contact in my workouts. So probably like a month or so. How is it mentally every time you make a cut, every time you land on somebody's foot, every time you go down, how is it mentally? Can you keep it in the back of your head? Do you think, oh, oh no, or where, where are you mentally? It's tough. Um, I've obviously been through that knee and uh, different knee injury the last year, and having that experience to lean back on and knowing how much I've worked and how much I have faith. I believe that everything happens for a reason. I mean, anybody can get, be scared of getting injured. You don't have to have it pre-injury to do that or a prior injury to do that so I think the fear is always there but I try not to let it let it consume me and just have trust and go out there and have fun. Paige what was said in the aftermath of the last game what was the vibe the feel the kind of edge of you taking into the summer the team and yourself because of the way things ended last year? Uh, I would say I mean obviously the feelings in the locker room after were anger frustration um disappointment uh, but I feel like we obviously let it let that fuel us in everything that we do this summer and how much we're paying attention to details and how much of a different team we want to be than we were last year and just how hard we're working our work ethic and I feel like everything is taking a step forward in terms of preparation and how much we've improved already from this summer to last. Well, Lazy mentioned it's a different kind of anger or frustration than the year before. Yeah. I mean, you guys didn't feel like you played your best to play well maybe the way you did the year before. Yeah, I mean I don't know what the word is for it, but there was definitely a lot more anger and frustration um, in the in the game that we played and how the way things ended. I'm I knew we wanted to get farther and we could have made it all the way. Um, so to be out much sooner than we wanted to be was a lot of anger and a lot of it was us beating ourselves and us not preparing well that like the prior week of practice so I think it was a lot of things that could have been prevented and which we're trying to work on that now. You get some fuel from the men doing what they did? Yeah always when you see other people in your program win it kind of inspires you to want to do that and have that feeling but especially that I know those guys and how happy they were when they won it that's something that we all want to feel as well. Yes, is it was Reflecting back on when she was still deciding you were here and how vocal and supportive and helpful you were in helping her ultimately come here. What, what do you remember about the conversations with her? I'm sure you guys looked ahead and figured you might play like 100 games together, you know, and, and for various reasons it hasn't worked out that way yet. Um, but do you remember what you envisioned back then when talking to AZ? Yeah, I mean, obviously all that's going on is not at all what we envisioned, but um, just hopefully being ready to sort of capture those moments that we envisioned this year um, and us trying to stay healthy and us just wanting to play on the court together. Um, but we envision winning, having fun, national championships. So that's still a goal that we want to attain and a goal that we're going to work extremely hard for. One of the silver linings has been Nika becoming one of the best point guards in the nation. Well, you've been out. So how do you see the two of you working together now that that, that you're back and, and what's that going to be like? Me and Nika have played together before. I mean, this is nothing new. So I think we'll just continue to feed off each other. I think both of our energies and both of our abilities to lead and use our voices are going to work extremely well together. Um, obviously, she knows how I want to play. I know how she wants to play. And we'll just be able to feed off each other really well. And yeah, I mean, there's tape on when we used to play with each other before. So it'll be that but better. Obviously, you got injured a couple months before ice, but having her there the whole season long side of you, how nice was it to have her during your recovery? It was amazing. Um, as I was saying, like, as unfortunate as it was to be able to have each other to lean on through the toughest times of our life was extremely important. Um, and for us, our relationship, too, is built around faith. Um, so having somebody to share that faith with and share these experiences with um, and having somebody to lean on through the tough times knowing that they know exactly what you're going through and you're going through the same thing and the same struggles and the same adversity um, so to have each other to lean on through the tough times is extremely important to both our mental sanities I would say. Going through those tough times what did you learn you know what have you learned about yourself just throughout this process? Uh, like the big picture of life is to never take anything for granted um, at any single moment of any single day anything can be taken away from you and to just I mean 
like look at how much of a blessing it is to wake up every morning and trying to find the extreme positives in life and trying to use this adversity to know that there's a better story coming and sort of finding my identity outside of basketball and how much I value first being a good person and that is exemplified and magnified when you're not playing basketball. So, Is what do you think about Caroline's two-year body of work? And when she's been good to go, she's been really good, really high impact to players. She's obviously dealt with her own set of frustrations um, and has per persevered through a lot, it seems like. Yeah, she's one of the most strong and resilient people I know, um, just all that she's been through the past couple of years. We all know what a healthy Caroline looks like and how reliable she is on the court, off the court. Um, but she, the best thing I can say about her is she stayed just a very great person, like a very positive person, a very great teammate to be around. And no matter what she's going through, you, you can always see a smile on her face. And just being like, just a great teammate to be around. And I think with all that she's been through, the way that she fights and she's just, her strength is unimaginable. So I would say she's definitely one of the strongest people I know. What is Coach P? learned from the bench that's going to help player do this year get better? I think a big takeaway I had from last season was how important the little details are. Um, things that coach is harping on right now in June, July and summer sessions is going to come back to bite you in March and April if you don't fix them. So just trying to, I mean, teach the younger guys and lead and how important the little details, details are in a basketball. The little things make the big things better, so I would say that, that probably. From the outside, people are going to want you to come back and play at National Player of the Year level immediately. What are your expectations for yourself? How soon do you think you'll be back to the player you want to be, and do you expect to be better than you were before the injury? Yeah, I'm feeling stronger, more in shape body-wise. I'm lifting as much weight as I ever have and taking care of my body as much as I ever have, so I think I think I'll be better. Um, uh, but as I experienced the, my sophomore season when I was trying to come back, it wasn't as fluid as I wanted it to be. There was ups and downs, highs and lows. And I know when I first came back, I wasn't the player I wanted to be. Um, and I'm not rushing it. I know I say that now, but I want to be the type of player I was before um, pre-injury, but better. Um, and I have those expectations for myself. So that's where I want to be. Hey, sorry, I got to the party late. Where are you exactly in workouts and that, like how like percentage wise what are, you, what are you doing are you cutting where are you are yeah I'm playing basketball um, doing individual workouts team workouts I'm just not cleared for five on five live yet but everything else I'm pretty much doing what was the first time you were able to you know be back working out with the team and what were the emotions of that uh I would say I mean I hopped in a couple of drills towards the end of the season mm -hmm. last year but nothing like being in tune with the practice like this summer I would say I'd done most of the stuff um, uh, done like three days in a row, four days in a row, uh, but a lot of basketball on the court stuff that I really haven't had to step out for. Um, and it just feels so great, I mean, just to be back on the court again with my teammates. And I know they appreciate it, I appreciate it as well, but it's just a whole lot of fun. But Paul, you're on the 12 month mark when you guys go to Europe. Do you think you'll be able to play in those exhibition games? I mean, I probably could, but it's still trying to balance like, is it worth it? Should I just, I mean, Technically, the season or real games don't start until November, so it's just trying to make sense of it all, get out the pros and the cons, and we'll see. We'll see. Are you treating this as your senior year or a junior year, or have you even thought that far ahead yet? No, I've really learned in all that I've been through not to speak about the future because you never know what's going to happen. So I'm just trying to stay present, stay in the moment, but you never know. I, don't, I have no idea, so we'll see. Did you know your faith is important? You talk about fighting through adversity, but is there a point where you're like, I'm tired of fighting through adversity because you had to deal with a lot of it since you've been here. Uh, not really. I mean, I've tried not to ask why. I mean, I know the first week when I the ACL was diagnosed, I tore it, was the worst. Like, I had trouble. I, I had anxiety. I couldn't sleep. I would have people pinch me because I didn't think it was real. Um, and I was asking, like, why? Like, this doesn't make sense. Like, I was feeling healthy, like, strong. Um, I just come back from a different knee injury, so like, why now, why me? But I think the biggest thing that I've leaned on in my faith is don't lean on my own understanding. There's just some things in life that you'll never understand. Um, but God does everything for a reason, and he always has an understanding of everything. And I think 
God is using this and me as a testament to how much you can overcome with him by your side and how much he can do for you. I, I feel like when I can't do it, he'll carry me through. So I think my faith has made me stop questioning why because I just, I just trust. So There was so much hype when AZ came here about how good the two of you could be together and talk about how you'd never lose a game with the two of you. That has died down a lot. Do you think people are starting to sleep on you guys? And how good can you two be if you're both healthy for an entire year together, which you have not been? Yeah, I mean, I would probably be asleep too if I, we never saw it in action for like two years. So I think we're both just trying to get healthy and staying patient and the work will show. Like, I, I truly believe the work will show and how hard we work and how much we put into our bodies and our minds and our on-court um, activities, I think the work will show. People will wake up. It'll all be fine. So I believe that. How much would it mean to listen? You could walk in here and there's, they've done a lot. You could, you could make it seem like it's going to be easy to win a national championship. But how much would it mean to you to be able to add another banner to this wall? It would mean everything. It would make everything that I've been through worth it. Um, and it's something that we're working towards every day. I know our senior class, um, me, Nico, Leah, Aubrey, this is probably our last chance together at it. So this we're going to give it our all and give everything we have to win a national championship here. People have talked about you and, and AZ's games being the perfect mesh for each other. You know, they aren't saying, oh, there won't be enough basketballs. How could they possibly make both of them happy? Why do you think you do mesh well or can mesh well together? I think we're both super unselfish. Um, we both loving seeing our teammates succeed and seeing our teammates do well. Um, nobody is really shot hunting and looking for their own statistics um, and own individual accolades. We're just worried about the team winning and everyone being happy, everyone having fun. So I think our mentalities and our mindsets have a lot to do with that. You said you want to be better this year than you were as the National Player of the Year. Mm -hmm. How does that look? What can you improve? What, what do you think you already may be better at? I think using my body and my strength and being able to take contact, finish through contact and I just want to be more fluid in all of my movements on offense and defense, um, trying to maximize what I'm doing. I know before I used to run around a lot and do a lot of different things, but I guess being smarter with my movements and how much energy I'm exerting and just being smart about that, um, but also just leading, using my voice, um, getting everybody involved, um, the scoring, the defense. I think in all aspects, I just want to be better. So mm -hmm. coach is rubbing off on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Caroline was saying that there's a difference between going 100% and overdoing it, and she's learned that through her injuries. Are, how are you balancing wanting to do everything, wanting to go 100% and being smart about it, given what you've gone through? Yeah, that's what I was talking about and, and what things I want to improve on. I used to just be a racehorse that never filled up for gas, and Hootie was telling me how every race car needs to stop and fill up for gas every once in a while. You got you to take some steps back to take some steps forward. And usually I'm just a person that wants to be the hardest worker in the room, hardest worker in the gym, first one in, the last one to leave. Um, but I'm trying to be more cordial of resting and taking some time off and not going 110% in everything that I do, but just being smart with how much I'm exerting and how much I'm doing and listening to my body. And if there's something that's bothering me, not fighting through it, but talking to people and getting treatment and stuff like that. Who was telling you that? I'm sorry. Is it... uh, Hootie, the strength coach. Oh. It's just for AC to have confidence. I know when she was coming back and returning, uh, she was more second guessing herself. And obviously, like I had been coming back mm -hmm. from an, a knee injury and coming back sort of when playoffs started is extremely difficult just because you're thrown into the fire and it's extremely physical and you haven't really gotten the reps in. and just don't feel like yourself um, so I think for AZ just getting he healthy and having that confidence and having a hungry mentality I think you can see it on the court here in, in the summer. Yeah. She always talks about having this really high standard for herself and almost like sounds like beating herself up when she doesn't meet that so how do you see her I guess navigate that but then also maybe I don't know if you like, would, would want to encourage her to almost like not put as much pressure on herself or that kind of balance of yeah, it's hard to tell somebody don't do something when you do it yourself. So I think we help 
each other through that, but I think part of coming to UConn is a lot of people come here want to be perfectionists and want to be perfect at every single thing that they do. Mm -hmm. um, but for being perfect is unattainable, so just knowing that in the back of your mind. And I think the biggest thing when you're struggling so hard with being or being on yourself too hard is just to be a great teammate, bring energy, bring effort, and then the rest will take care of itself. So I think that's something that we always try to lean on. Easy joke, she forgot how good you were. Said you give her, <laughs> when she missed a pass or missed a shot, she forgot how good your passes were. Yeah, I, I passed it to her. I think it slipped right through her hands. She, she wasn't ready to shoot, and I said, all right, like, we're about to play together. Like, <laughs> get ready, bro. Like, this is real life now. So I get on her all the time, but. So yeah. nothing's changed in that regard with you two? Nah, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. When you hear people talk about an unbeatable super team like LSU bringing all these players into a championship atmosphere. Do you, do you think, you know what, just hold on a second, we were a super team before, uh, you know, everybody started bringing in players from transfers and stuff, or what's your mindset? Uh, well, LSU's won a national championship, so, I mean, they're the reigning national champs, so they have, they have the right to talk and they have the means to back it up because they won, and we haven't won that yet, so I think we're more trying to earn our respect on the court and we have to prove it because we haven't really proved anything yet um, since since I've been here. Um, so I think we're just more worried about ourselves and us being ready for that stage and that platform and those type of huge games. And yeah, I would say more, we're definitely more inward focused and just trying to make sure that we're ready for those moments and we're prepared. And